In one of the most beautifully tragic stages of life, the sixth grade is where my story begins. I grew up attending Catholic school in the Philadelphia area. I look back at parts of this experience, and there are really some things that would make you go, huh. After all, the extent of my sex and health education was learning that girls get their periods, and that smoking cigarettes would make your teeth turn yellow, taught to me by a man who smoked cigarettes and had yellow teeth because of it. This same teacher was fired for some content the school found on his computer. And after getting fired, he made a surprise visit back to the school without pants on. <laughs> the school had to be put on lockdown, not because he was an active shooter, but it's safe to say he definitely had his guns blazing. <laughs> and that was my health teacher. <clears throat> It'll come as no surprise that there were some lapses in my sex and health education. Growing up in the 90s, we weren't afforded some of the luxuries of today's kids. If kids now are even a little curious, but maybe too embarrassed to ask, all they have to do is sneak away with their iPad and ask Google. When it came to romantic relationships, my friends and I had to seek out knowledge from figures I can only describe as sage, older siblings. <laughs> I didn't have any sisters myself, so I had to learn the ways of the world from my friend's older sisters. As a sixth grader, I genuinely thought these eighth graders were like goddesses in the world of love and lust. <laughs> they were living, breathing, 17 magazines, a wealth of knowledge and tips that we had the privilege of tapping into. One fateful night at a sleepover, I learned from a friend's older sister about the bases. <clears throat> And for the most part, they made sense. First base was kissing. OK, easy enough. <clears throat> Second base was feeling up a girl's shirt. OK, that one makes sense, too. When they got to third base and beyond, they mentioned something about the word oral. I was playing it cool, nodding my head like, yeah, <laughs> duh, of course. <laughs> but meanwhile, my mind was reeling. I didn't hear the rest of their conversation as my internal dialogue took over. You put your mouth where? I wondered, like where they pee? <laughs> okay, there's no way that one's true. <laughs> I, made <laughs> I made a mental note to do more research later and said to myself, never doing that one. I remember my friend Maureen relaying the message secondhand from her eighth grade cousins that kissing isn't hard at all, she reported, but you have to do something with your tongue. You have a couple of choices. You can make the alphabet with your tongue or make shapes, like a heart or a star. If that's too much to remember, just do the circles. Okay, bases, spelling out words with your tongue for a good makeout. How hard could this be? <laughs> All of this knowledge came in handy as my friends and I traveled to other local schools to the mecca of teen angst, grade school dances. Before we hit the town, the sage old, older siblings taught us all the cool dances we'd encounter. I was so grateful they had taken us under their wing, teaching us dances like the cha-cha slide, a song that explicitly tells you when to slide and stomp and exactly which foot you should be doing it with. <laughs> In their defense, this was something new. The Casper Slide, part two, <laughs> featuring the platinum band. And this time, I knew, we're gonna get funky. <laughs> In the Philadelphia suburbs, any kid from any school could come to the dances, and for a nominal five of your parents' dollars, you were permitted entry to sweat, dance, grind, and scream to the window! To the wall! <laughs> I feel like we needed that. <laughs> while pointing to the window and the wall. <clears throat> After some AOL instant messages going back and forth, my friend, a girl named Shen, was slated to make out with a boy named Buddy that week at the Holy Cross dance. 
<clears throat> it was a big week. We threw on our tightest flare jeans, rolled on some eye glitter, drowned ourselves in perfume, and rolled up squad deep in a mint green minivan. <laughs> the dance went off without a hitch, culminating in Chan acting as our test dummy <clears throat> to report back on how the dance floor makeout played out. <sighs> Just another weekend in the burbs. On Monday, I was back to school, and that year I had a particularly bad teacher, Miss Hogan. We could smell her fear from a mile away, and it smelled like egg McMuffins and coffee breath. <laughs> Being the primal hormonal tweens we were, capitalized on this fear daily. The poor thing had no control from day one, which meant maximum time for us to catch up and gossip about all the happenings of the weekend. On this Monday, after the Holy Cross dance, Shan described not only the makeout session, but how she had gone to second base after leaving. <laughs> Shan. <laughs> Shan had been bold enough to get in the batter's box before the rest of us had even laced up our cleats. <laughs> Later that morning, Miss, to Miss Hogan told me that the principal wanted to see me. Me? Now, this was a shock because after drinking the Catholic school Kool-Aid for seven years, shit, I loved rules. <laughs> And I loved following them and steering clear of anything that would land me even close to the principal's office. So me, a rule follower in every sense of the word, had a pang of nervousness upon my first trip to the principal's office. I explored the possibilities on my walk down. Was I accepting some sort of an award? <laughs> oh. But it's not the end of the year. <laughs> I stopped, took a deep breath, and told myself, it was an award. <laughs> After blending into the background at school, not causing any trouble, finally someone has recognized me for my faithful compliance. <laughs> I was walking down to get an award, and I told myself, you know what, Danielle? You deserve this. <laughs> now, I knew Mrs. Sheehan was a principal you did not mess with, you might be thinking, RA, Catholic school, I'm sure she was strict. But that description wouldn't quite do her justice. A student once drew a picture of her with a vague threat to her on it. And did she reprimand him? Call his parents? No, no. She called it in as a threat to the local police station <laughs> and got a fifth grader, an 11 year old, handcuffed and arrested at recess. <laughs> I walked into her office, she gave me a curt smile, welcomed me in, and not having time for bullshit, cut right to the chase. Danielle, do you know anyone named Buddy? <laughs> I panicked on the inside, and being that I was 11, I probably panicked on the outside too. Obviously, Buddy and Shan's weekend exploits were the talk of the town, but was this the dirt my principal was seeking out? I wasn't sure, but I didn't want to let any knowledge of that to, on to the principal. I mean, I have a cousin named Buddy. I have an uncle named Buddy, too. But aside from that, <laughs> no, no, I don't know any buddies aside from that. <laughs> like a seasoned pro, she nodded slowly and remained silent, allowing me to fill in the gaps as I lied painfully with my fake stream of consciousness. You know, it's kind of crazy. Like, I bet you're wondering, like, how does she know two buddies, right? But like, the story behind it is because like, my uncle came first and then it, his son came later and that's the cousin. Um, Cause it's like a family situation. She gave me a knowing smile, thanked me for my time and sent me back. I rejoined my class after a slow and confused walk back. I walked in and saw my best friend, Michelle, sitting on the other end of the room and mouthing, what happened down there? I mouthed back. It was about Shan and Buddy. She whispered, what? I signaled to Michelle that I'd write her a note. Then I wrote the note of all notes, a full page letter telling her everything about the principal's office. <laughs> As I signed the note, I wondered if maybe this salacious content was more suited for an in-person conversation. The thought of this juicy note getting past classmate to classmate all the way to Michelle with no hiccups seemed out of the realm of possibilities. I patted myself on the back for having foresight. I ripped the note into tiny pieces and threw it in the trash. I told Michelle I'd fill her in at lunch. 
My anxiety about the principal's office had nearly subsided by the afternoon until after lunch, girls from my class began <coughs> getting called to the principal's office one by one. As they came back, I desperately searched their faces for clues of what had happened, but learned nothing. Then I was informed my presence was once again being requested. And this time I felt confident it was not about the Christian Attitude Award. <laughs> I walked in and again, Ms. Mrs. Sheehan asked the same question, but in a very different tone. So I'm gonna ask you again, are you sure you don't know anyone named Buddy? I again, nervously explained the uncle cousin combo of buddies I knew. <laughs> and how those two were most definitely the only buddies in my life. Then, from under her desk, my principal pulls up the handwritten note I had written to Michelle. <laughs> the one where I had just explained in painstaking detail how I most certainly knew the buddy she was talking about. <laughs> and written evidence of my lies, signed by me. <laughs> this note, I can only assume, had been fished out of the trash and meticulously taped back together by none other than the eavesdropping, good-for-nothing Miss Hogan. <laughs> I cried like the little lying baby I was and walked back to class, class lifeless. Lucky for me, my principal had much bigger fish to fry in this plot to figure out what went down at this dance, so I was let off easy in terms of punishments. But the guilt I had for lying and accidentally diming out my friend was punishment enough. Now that my principal knew all the juicy details, she was able to confront the culprits and hand out penance for their sins. She made Shan's mom come immediately and dismissed her to go home and discuss with her parents her unbecoming ways. <laughs> Looking back, the absurdity of a principal using an entire day doing private investigator level sleuthing is not lost on me. <clears throat> She had 300 kids, two buildings, 20 teachers to take care of, and spent an entire day interrogating witnesses and instilling the fear of God in children, making us all feel shame and guilt for, what, some innocent teenage romance? It's hard not to think of the one million other ways this could have been approached, including the option of not making a situation at all. Having both excellent and horrific teachers growing up definitely affected me, so much so that I became a teacher myself. <laughs> As a student, blind compliance was expected, and the only message we used to receive about sex and drugs was, don't do it. But today, my students challenge me and ask questions I would never be bold enough to ask. And while I'm proud of my students for their own open-mindedness and unhindered curiosity, I also expect it. Maybe it is because they have Google, but hopefully it's just because they have trusted adults with no agenda of shaming who are ready to field those ever-pressing questions like, do you really put your mouth where they pee for third base? Thank you. <laughs>